What's going on everybody? Welcome back. My name's Quantum and today I'll be telling you guys the truth about OLED burn-in in 2021. So smack a like on this video because I'm getting to the point right now. So if you're like me, you've been told that OLED burn-in is a very big problem. No matter what, you're going to get it. It's going to be the end of the world. You do gaming on it. Your OLED's going to die, all this stuff. But I've done an investigation for the better part personally of going on three years now with my Sony A8G Bravia OLED from 2019 and for a few months now with my LG C1. And so the findings have concluded this. So long as you are not watching, you know, dinner menus at a restaurant on your OLED, you basically are fine. Because I've done everything from four to six hour gaming sessions with full HUDs enabled to watching, you know, over the air TV uh, to watching, you know, station TV shows on Hulu and things like that to, I mean, really, really, you name it. I've basically done it on this thing. If it's normal use, I've done it. And it wasn't one of those things where I had to worry or, uh, you know, or I noticed a problem after the after the fact. I think the biggest problem that we run into is that companies like Samsung are very conniving and their marketing campaign is very effective. I mean, of course, you don't want to burn in TV, a TV capable of burning in any capacity. Ideally, you'd like to be able to leave the TV on all night and nothing ever happen. If that's the case and that is something you're looking for, then of course, yeah, sure, buy, you know, an, a QLED or something that is not going to degrade over time because that's just not the OLED technology and that you're never getting around that that's just how the technology works it of course degrades with use degrades over time that's the the nature of you know an organic compound inside of a television but I will say it does take a little bit more time because it seems as though they sealed those organic compounds a little better than they used to do back in the day and I mean I'm talking 2016 2017 2018 I think like 2019 is when uh, the OLED technology really hit a high point. And it was with uh, the LG C9. From the C9 onward, really all of the LG panels that LG created had been really improved, frankly, as far as their resistance to static content and even image retention, as you guys know, year after year gets better on these OLED screens. And that's because, of course, they're, they're finding ways of I, I don't know, reducing it year after year. So, you know, their engineers can figure that part out, all the technical stuff. And uh, me being the reviewer, I just get to tell them how they did. You know what I mean? That That's just kind of how these things should work. Now, ideally in the perfect world, everybody would do this and everybody would be honest about it. But unfortunately, there are people that do lie to you. And one of the lies you're going to hear is you'll never get OLED burn in. It's a myth. And people are just uh, lying about it. It's fantasy. It's it's L LED fanboy drivel, like stuff like that. It's just pure ignorance. You absolutely can still get burn in on these displays. So again, like I'm saying, don't use it for like menus or something. Don't use it for like a dedicated computer monitor. So like if you're opening up static browsers or, or, or windows and you're just using it for hours on end doing like whatever comprehensive work you do, like for your main job or whatever, and you know, you're a remote employee and you've got all these static windows and you know, maybe you're doing a call center job from home or whatever. Like that's not something that you want to be doing on an OLED because the longer something sits on the screen, the less you're letting it recycle, you know, the pixels. It's not refreshing normally. So naturally, over time, it's definitely not going to be as resistant to that kind of use. Now, again, they're, they're really good about dimming down that stuff, and they're really good about making sure that you're not burning in when you are using it as a computer, because I've, I've used it as a computer for no more than two hours, though. You know, so for the really hardcore users working a full shift, you know, people that do, you know, 12, 15 hour shifts, maybe you're a, a tax broker or something like that, mortgage broker. Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be getting into advanced stuff like that, long term stuff like that. Maybe you're watching stocks all day. This wouldn't be a, a good monitor or television for stock watching, right? But if you're not doing stuff like that, right? If you're just playing Miles Morales Spider-Man and you have HUDs fully enabled like I do on the screen right now, like what you're looking at, you're fine. Because I've been doing this for almost three years now on my A8G. And honestly, I'm not even going to lie to you. I, I've driven the A8G way harder than, honestly, any television that has been an OLED has or 
really should be recommended to be driven because I really was, my goal with that OLED was really to burn it in as fast as possible, as soon as possible, if it was possible at all, because I keep hearing how terrible OLED is and I wanted to kind of test the waters myself. I'm that kind of person. You tell me something's dangerous or terrible, I'm going to investigate. And that's just how I work. And at the end of the day, like, I find that, you know, yeah, you can still get burned in for sure, but it's not anywhere near as, like, exaggerated as what Samsung was trying to do or a lot of the people that are, like, pro-Samsung. So that's something that you have to think about. Now, my whole point to this is to kind of answer those questions of what, well, I would love an LG OLED. I would love to buy OLED in general. I really would, but I'm really afraid of burning. I mean, I'm, I'm being a real person with you right now by telling you, like, this is my daily driver, my everyday TV, and I wouldn't make this my daily driver if, I mean, this is my daily gaming TV, I need to specify that. I wouldn't make this my daily gaming TV if I was really terrified of burning or I felt like there was any kind of, you know, existing risk that the new OLEDs proposed. I would literally come out and tell you, like, per my investigations, like, this is the result. Now, to be very clear, I'm not just, I know this might come off, I guess, for some people as, like, me just giving an opinion, so let me just, at this point, kind of specify, like, I've run actual scientific tests, so I've done static tests, I've done 5% uh, near black tests, all of which to test the uh, burn-in, the uh, screen retention capabilities of, you know, the temporary screen burn, as people like to call it, right? Which again, it's just image retention. And I, I've done all of this using Xbox home menu interface, you know, windows with tiles and things like that. And now I must warn you, if you leave it on the Xbox menu or you leave it on the PlayStation 5 home menu for a prolonged period of time, those things don't work. So basically, the the uh, anything that's a square shape, really, the OLEDs don't like that. Also, if you're leaving people's faces on the screen for a long period of time, so this wouldn't be ideal as some sort of gallery TV where you're just showing one masterpiece and an OLED resolution forever. Again, static stuff. Don't do it. It's not ideal. Um, I found that, you know, when you start doing stuff like that, image retention not only increases dramatically, but again, in my personal view, your chances of burning go up exponentially. So the moral of the story is, so long as you have moving things on the screen, it's a moving image, you're fine. Don't sit there and watch stuff that, or use it in a manner where you can't uh, have something constantly running on the screen. Now, I say constantly running and that might scare some people, but I really mean like, it just needs to be natural content. TV shows, movies, gaming. That's really all you can do on an OLED. If you're trying to do, uh, you know, business type stuff, like I was saying, or gallery purpose type stuff, find a different TV. Go the route of maybe the Samsung frame or something like that. But that being said, uh, that's pretty much it. These are my findings, and I, I think I'll stand by them. Now, again, uh, drop it down below. If you want to see weekly burn-in tests, I can give you burn-in tests. And what I'll do to make it really useful for you is I'll put the dates underneath the burn-in test. So I'll say something like, you know, LGC1 burn-in test as of, you know, whatever the date is at that time. And we can keep doing it endlessly throughout the years as long as this tv is alive i'll keep doing them for you every single week if that's something you want to see with my usage of gaming movies tv shows all that stuff over the years if it destroys itself i mean hey we can do that i can i can put that on for you guys and we can kind of have that open dialogue as to whether or not you know oleds really do burn in as fast as some people say again i've had my sony aag bravia oled since 2019 so when i put the dates at the bottom 2020, uh, 2021, 2022, as we go into it, you guys will start seeing as the years are stacking on how I'm using this OLED and that might actually maybe ease a little bit of your worries. But again, that being said, all will be kind of revealed in time, I suppose. But let me know if you actually want that. Seriously, sound off down below and say, yeah, no, that'd be really cool or not really interested in that. I'm not worried about burning. Uh, that kind of dialogue would be helpful as well. Of course, as always, your feedback helps with these videos and, you know, creating things that are useful to you. But that being said, I really want to thank you guys so much for watching the number one brand in honesty. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later.